The coronavirus is becoming part of daily conversation, and for good reason. But how much do we actually know about it? To get my questions answered, and probably yours, I'm talking to someone who's way smarter than me about all this stuff. His name's Dr. Daniel Barbaro, and he works in infectious disease control. We decided to play the game Pandemic, which simulates a global health outbreak. But first, let's go over what we know so far. More than a thousand people have been infected here in the U.S., according to NBC. Globally, the World Health Organization says more than 100,000 people have been infected. And around the world, at least 3,800 people have died so far. When you hear about the coronavirus and you're talking to, like, health officials at the CDC, is this sort of their worst-case scenario? Yes, so uh, epidemic is a greater number of cases in one community that's higher than usual, a pandemic that goes across the world and across countries. Okay, so I just drew an epidemic card, which means I have to draw a new city from here. And, oh, perfect. I'm infecting Miami with the <laughs> disease. Is this, I imagine that to some degree, this resembles what officials are going through right now. Yeah, well, the, uh, the other thing they're finding, uh, in addition to the known links to other countries is these community outbreaks such as the one in Washington where there wasn't any obvious connection with a foreign person who went to China or whatever. Uh, has coronavirus spread at a rate that was expected? Well, and, and certainly in China it is, but since it's a new epidemic, who knows what should be expected? That's one of the problems with this. I, I imagine it's true that some of the proliferation is impacted by the country where the virus is spreading. Absolutely. Well, let's take China for instance. Uh, one of the issues with China is they're insular. It's hard to get information from them, which makes the tracking really difficult. Are they really being honest with their numbers? And also, uh, do they have, apparently they ran out of a lot of the, the tests. They don't have any more tests left. So what's happening now? So that's one of the problems. If you don't have uh, wide open communication and, and a good medical system, then you're going to not be able to trace the pandemic. People worry about this and all oh, we need a vaccine. What, I've had a number of patients admitted to the hospital this year with severe influenza. They never got the flu vaccine, and yet they want a vaccine for the coronavirus. You know, so you can, we have things right now to help prevent Ill illnesses, and we still don't even use them correctly. So, you know, it's going to take a year to get a vaccine to this virus. It's probably going to take another year to get uh, a medicine for this virus. Coronavirus is not like a terminal illness. True. Well, it's terminal if you get it and it kills you. Right, right. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's such a small amount. 80% of people who get it, it's going to be a cold. So 8 in 10, and it's only the very small number of the 20% who get it who are going to be really get sick with it. And it's mostly going to be elderly who are men who have all the medical problems. I imagine proximity contributes to spread. So the closer you are, the more likely this epidemic will spread to your community. And the farther you are, even though it is far sometimes, the travel modalities like the airplanes, if there's common flights and multiple flights, then you're going to be in more trouble. When your neighbor has it, are you doomed at that point? If you're in proximity to those places, and actually in coronavirus terms, it would be Italy, northern Italy. Uh, apparently it was some people went to China, came to Italy, and same thing in Germany, Chinese uh, visitors who went, or conferences, which brings to the point, maybe we shouldn't do conferences for a while. But in the meantime, that's, you're sort of serious, that's real yeah. medical advice, is to sort of limit uh, just exposure points, be it travel, conferences, you know, things where you'd be out of your normal, required daily activities. Absolutely. You know, this goes back to the days of the plague when the cities would self-quarantine themselves. You couldn't go out or in because they realized some way, they didn't know at that time it was rats and the, and the ticks from the rats, but they knew if they let people out of their community that other communities would get infected. So this is the same scenario. What does the average person do to, you know, help remove these places of infection from the global map? Well, I think that most people have to take responsibility for their own health. Get, first of all, take a deep breath, wash your hands, get the flu vaccine. If you're in contact with somebody who may have an illness, wear a mask and make sure that person's quarantined. If you're sick, don't go on flight, don't go to work. And if your kid is sick, don't send them to school. Those kind of things, very simple stuff that can really help prevent any epidemic, any viral-borne, um, airborne epidemic. It's really simple things that can make you feel better, that you're controlling your environment and you're controlling your risk to get this virus. <laughs>